Hey there, everybody. Welcome back to the Pike Homestead. So I'm just going to have you walk around with me a little bit today as I work on a few uh, few things. First, we've uh, taken the roosters out from the hens uh, about a month or two ago. Just to give the hens a bit of a break because we've got four roosters. We're, we're down to uh, 13 laying hens right now because we lost a few through the winter. <clears throat> and that's a little bit, you know, that's a, that's a bit of a bad ratio for uh, for what we had. So we're seeing, you know, a lot of the hens were starting to lose their feathers and stuff. Now, a large part of that is due to the fact that they're all kind of hitting that molting stage. Yeah, because the roosters are doing that too. Uh, today, because uh, we, we do have one hen kind of brooding in there. So we wanted to see if, uh, you know, if we can get her to hatch some eggs, but to do that, we need a rooster in there. So I'm gonna see if I can grab uh, grab one of the boys here and uh, and get him in with the girls. Cause they've just been living in, in our, in the old coop here for the last, I don't know, three, four weeks. So there's a couple of them. They're all looking kind of scraggly because they're all molting too. They've all kind of hit that age. But uh, I'm going to see if I can get... Where'd he go? No. <clears throat> anyway. So I'm going to see if I can get uh, get Goose out. And we'll leave Maverick, Penguin, and Roadrunner. We'll stay in here because, you know, uh, well, Goose is really the prettiest. So here, let me show him to you. So that there is Goose. So he's the one who's kind of grown up to be the boy in charge. Uh, along with, you know, then we've got Roadrunner, Penguin, and Maverick. So, yes, I have Maverick and Goose. Anyway, so I'm going to see if I can get him out, but i got to get him into, into here because I can't get into the cage back there. The, there is no gate to it, so I'm going to see if I can uh, get him in. Here he is. Ready to go see the ladies? So, here we go. Got him with me. And <laughs> hopefully, they're just good. Okay, stand your hand a little bit. They're generally okay once we get them, you know, kind of tucked under the arm here. They tend to calm down. They've always, always done that. But, uh, yeah, so let's see how he does once I let him loose with the, uh, the chickens and goats here. So here we go into the barn. There he goes. <clears throat> so it's not like they've been that separated. I mean, the girls come and and visit the boys through the mesh, even though they're not able to actually get together. But they all do tend to come over and say hi. So he should be a happy boy. Checking things out. So anyway, that seems to have gone smoothly. <clears throat> you know, he's, uh, going and checking out all the girls, saying hi to the ones in the nesting boxes, so, you know, I'm just not expecting anything from that. <laughs> uh, but yes, we do have the one broody hen in there, so what we're hoping to do is, you know, in a day or two, actually give her some actual, you know, viable eggs to slip under and see what happens. Um, so, other than that, you know, and, you know, it's also good to have have the one guy there uh, just as a lookout too because we've seen some uh, evidence of fox den on the property so we've had the dogs out there and everything you know, checking it out and making noise and and uh, peeing around it and stuff and uh, last time I checked it it looked like it hadn't come back but we will have to check that again uh, relatively soon here to make sure but having the boys 
in case uh, in case a fox is showing around, have one of the boys out will be a good thing. Uh, but generally, the chickens stick around with the goats too. So, <laughs> and Sally in particular won't uh, won't put up with any guff from anything. She'll uh, she'll protect her kids and and by extension the chickens too. All right, so on to the next project, which is. Uh, if you saw a couple of videos ago, you had me starting putting in the uh, the invisible fence for the dogs because we don't want them, because we're right on the highway here, so we don't want them crossing out into the highway. Um, Ruby, we're not really worried about. She's sensible enough. She doesn't show any indication to want to go there unless there's deer across the road. Um, but Hank and Polly, well, Polly, she'll get bored with whatever we're doing and just sneak off if we stay outside too long and she goes and trots along the highway which uh, you know small black dog that's a recipe for disaster <clears throat> and Hank has definitely shown interest on what's out there especially like when there's roadkill nearby he'll start leaving the property to go find that so we want to stop that uh, we've had them on um, there's also a radio transmitter version of the fence so we've had them on that for for the longest time, so they're trained to the beeping and everything that the colors do before they get a little shock. Um, and they they definitely both pay attention to that. And then we've just got to get Polly trained uh, with the in-ground fence uh, once it's up, <clears throat> just because the the radio the the wireless colors will work with the in-ground fence, but the the third color we have is just for the in-ground fence, so uh, that one will not work with the radio transmitter. So we haven't put it on Polly yet, but she tends to stay with us and indoors most of the time. It's just if we're outside doing chores for too long, then we'll have cars honking or, you know, new strangers showing up with our dog in their car. <laughs> so we, you know, uh, I got to get this fence done. I've done most of the prop, like I've done most of the area we want to have covered. Uh, we did buy enough to do the whole property, but uh, just for the sake of a time and and just because we've got cattle on the farm right now. Uh, you know, I know Hank's fine with them and Polly, but she likes to go and roll in their poop. So we've decided to kind of fence off the section that we're going to be using the most to let the dogs run. And then things like going down here to the, uh, to the dugout there, uh, we don't want the dogs going down there because that's where the cows are. So we've got our, our five ladies and their, and their calves. They're just all kind of hanging out, enjoying the weather, some of them staying out of the sun as they're getting warm, and just, you know, staying down by the water and keeping the grass short. So, it's always fun to have cows on the property. But, so, uh, anyway, I've got to finish putting in some, uh, some of the stuff in ground, because we also don't want the dogs going through the junk pile. Uh, and Hank in particular is bad about finding garbage and there's tons of it in the junk pile that he will pull out, chew on and destroy and not all of that is very healthy for a dog. Uh, oil cans and, uh, and buckets and wire and all sorts of stuff that's been dumped there over the years, not by us. Uh, it's our job to kind of clean it up over the next little while, but there's everything from, you know, siding from the house when it got redone, to toilets, to barbecues, to, you know, destroyed camping chairs, to tires, and other farm equipment, you know, old uh, ramps for loading cattle and stuff like that that have been put out of service. All just been dumped there in the trees. So, i got to put it in ground to block them from that. And uh, most of it's done. I uh, just got to skip over uh, from where I'm at to uh, to the fence because it can be mounted along the fence lines as well. So just to keep them out of the junk area, you know, we're we're almost there. But uh, yeah, I'll I'll show you where we're at here. So basically. We've gone, you know, the house is uh, is just here. So I've gone up from the house, that's where you saw the first video, and along the fences there, along the fence by the paddock on the far side of the house there. And it's gone down over around the, uh, the barn with the chickens and everything, so it's, we'll keep the dogs out of there. And then we've gone down along the, uh, along the fence here. 
and it's gone all the way around this field here. So this field we're going to be, uh, what I want to do is just use it for hay. Uh, so yeah, we go down and you see the wooden fence there and along there, and then up through the trees, and then right about where the grain auger there is, I've pulled it out because that's where the junk pile really starts. And I've been having it, bearing it down through the ground there. You can see that kind of brown line is where I've cut the grass to give me access. So, so that bag there is right where the spool is. I just wrapped it for because we've had a bit of rain. So I've just got to bury it through to here and then continue my line on just over there to the fence. And I can just run along the fence quick and easy and get it over to the trees where we'll have to bury it again and run it back down to connect up and close the loop around the house. <clears throat> uh, and after that's done and tested, we have to extend an extension out just to keep them out of where we've done the garden. So if you've seen the video with me working on the garden plot and also where we've had, you know, our neighbors came in and helped uh, till it up. We don't really want the dogs in there, uh, just because Hank in particular, although Ruby's just as bad now, they like to get into the dirt and dig. And if you have plants in that dirt that you're trying to grow into food, that doesn't work. So we've got to fence them off there too. And uh, and I can do that relatively easy. There's a, there's a join in the spools there that I can open up and uh, and extend the loop out to uh, block off the garden where we want it blocked off. And yeah, so just gotta grab my tools here and, uh, and get rolling. So you might be wondering, um, how have I been burying this cable quickly and easily? Um, it's just a small cable. It doesn't need to be buried that deep. So I've just been using an edger to cut a, cut a line and then just this nice pokey weedy tool that I can get on it and shove it down into the slot and that's it. Like it's just going a couple inches under the soil and I'm making sure to put it in places where I'm not going to be digging up. Um, so it's just along that one side of our of our front lawn to get out to the gate. And then it's just until now to get around the junk pile here. Um, it's all been just for gate openings in the fence. Uh, and other, other than that, I'm just tacking it to the fence because again, it doesn't have to be underground. Um, so, you know, it's a lot quicker and easier to just staple it to the fence. Uh, it also makes it easier if you have a if you have a problem like where you don't have a full um, connection or something, you, it's easier to check the fence when it's above ground. Um, but, you know, it's, it's one of those things where they recommend when you buy it that you run the ring around your house and make sure it's working before you bury it or anything. But our property is just so big that that's that's not doable, right? Uh, we're, we're covering, you know, probably a good third of our property with this. Uh, so, you know, there's that's looking at like what eight nine acres um, so yeah we're just gonna run it in do as best I can to you know hopefully not have any breaks or shorts and go from there so I got to get it run over to the house today and get it plugged in and test to see if it's working and hope that it's working because troubleshooting may be a bit of a pain in the butt so all right I'm gonna get working here uh, and I'll start with the edger and then we'll just go with getting the cable into the ground and then over to the fence.
So here we are about, you know, a month, month and a half later, uh, where I was trying to put the dog fence in and we'd moved uh, Goose over with the hens, getting the one rooster back in there. Uh, you know, we've since, you know, let in all the chicks that we've hatched and everything, they're, they're all being integrated. So I just wanted to give you an update on how they're doing. Uh, and uh, talk about a little bit about the dog fence. So it's not working as well as we had hoped. Um, there's a break somewhere in the roughly 2,400 feet of wire that I put out there. And it's not getting a proper circuit and signal, which is really unfortunate. Uh, so it means a lot more work to try to get it fixed. At first, you know, with the testing, the testing we were doing, uh, we thought it might be the transmitter, and so we got another one. They sent it out to us great. You know, they followed their warranty. We followed their testing procedures. Uh, and yeah, so we got another one, but it's doing the same thing. So my most likely course of action now is that it's a break in the wire. So anyway, we're in the barn here with some of the chickens. As you can see, Mr. Goose is happy here. He's doing real well. And he's not the only rooster here. So the three hen or the three chicks that we originally hatched just using the brooder plate in a bowl. Uh, so that's these three right here. So we've got eyebrows here because he's got his, you know, shiny white eyebrows on the rest of them being black. I mean, it was, he's, he's filled in on the, uh, on kind of the blonde feathers there a lot better than, uh, than what he was so it's not as prevalent but he had you know the eyebrows came in first and it looked hilarious and then we got big red there he's you know another one of those first three and we've got our little miss hen here and so these three have been a trio sticking together with you know within the rest of the flock not fully integrated but you know so we've got you know the two young roosters who aren't quite up to uh to full mating age or anything yet even though they've sometimes tried and they're all under control of calm Mr. Goose here. And he's doing happy, he's well. And right now, roosting up there is most of the 16 chicks we did in the incubator. There's a few more around here. And they've been in here for probably about two weeks now. And they're getting more comfortable around the big chickens as they get bigger themselves. Uh, so they're not running around quite as scared. <laughs> And looks like it's a busy laying day. Every single box is full right now. That's great. You know, our laying is going good. So that's an update for how things have been going uh, since I was, you know, cutting those little trenches and getting that, uh, that wire in the ground and running it along fences and getting it back to the house. Uh, and it, you know, still not working. But I've got to... Still got to run along and uh, and check it all, and we'll let you know if I ever get it working. All right, so uh, thanks for following along with uh, with this task and stuff we've been doing, and uh, you know, be sure to follow along more as we're trying to get uh, more stuff going again. All right, thanks. Have a good one.